was a wreck right there, and normally that would have been the spot you was in if had you left on time. Yeah. See what I'm talking about? Yeah. So we can't get all ruffled up because I done been out late. We get all crazy. God's protecting ourselves. Yeah. He's protecting us. So I had to pull myself together. Yeah. I called my fiance. He talked to me. It's like, girl, you cannot worry about that. God's work and God's call comes first. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I'm going home. He said, no, you're not. How stupid do you seem? Yeah. You, you doing just what you were going to tell people to do. You're going to go home and do what you just tell them that they need to do. Yeah. You don't went home. But you yeah. to be yeah. telling people yeah. to stay committed in spite of. Yeah. Girl, you don't get somebody's car and get there. I thank and praise God Amen. for continuing to stay committed to me, yeah. even when I don't even want to be committed. I'm just being real. And sometimes when life happens, like just forget. I can't, I can't win. I can't get ahead. But I'm gonna keep, keep persevering, pushing, because God is there. Hallelujah! Through it all, I just thank and praise God. Let me give you one more scripture for commitment. Let's look at Proverbs 16 and 3. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. And we wonder why we're not successful. Because we're just going all out, doing our own thing. We're not consulting God because we're not committed to him. So when you're not committed with somebody, you don't really trust what they say. So we got to get committed to God like he is to us. He deserves it. He deserves more than that. He don't deserve to get the white towel thrown down and us walk away. He doesn't deserve that. He laid down his life. He stayed committed to the cause. Sinless. He didn't have to die, but because his commitment to his father and his love for us, he died for us. So how dare us? Go about our daily life how we want to and go against what God is telling us to do. Stay committed. We have to stay committed. God has a plan. And we know Jeremiah 29 and 1, there's a plan for us. He has a plan. It's not for us to, to, to fail. It's for us to have a future, a hope, all the good things. But we have to stick to the plan. He has a purpose for our life. He came that, he might, that we might have life and have life more abundantly. The promises. We got to stay committed for the promises because if we follow the plan and realize the purpose God has for us, how many know we're going to reap the promises God has given us? But see, we can't get the promises and we don't want to work the plan. Then we don't want to find out the purpose. We don't want to know why we're here. We don't really want to know the plan. We just want the promises. That's not a commitment. A commitment is going in spite of when you don't even know what it is. And that's how God works. That's how God works. He know he can't tell us everything anyway. <laughs> he can't tell us everything. We can't tell my dad, you can't hold water. He ain't going to tell us everything because if he does, we still try to figure out a way to do it our way. He has a plan, so we just have to stay committed to it. If we want to ever hear God laugh, tell him our plan. So just stay committed, y'all, Okay. That's my first point. The second one is check your connection. Tell your neighbor, check your connection. So we got to stay committed and we got to stay connected. So let's look at John 15, one of my favorites. John 15, chapter 15. We're going to start at, I mean, John 15, that whole thing is good. But I ain't trying to keep y'all all night. Uh, look at, let's start at the fifth verse. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I am them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Ah, that's it right there. So that means if we don't stay connected to God, we can't do nothing. And we wonder why everything, we can't get nothing to go right. Check your connection. Con check your relationship with God. Amen. That's what the connection is. And seven says, but if you remain in me and my, my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. How can we not stay connected to somebody like that? We stay connected to people who suck off of us and drain us dry. 
did not even encouraging us, not building us up. And we still, oh, we'll give them another chance. No. When God is here, and if we stay connected to God, God will give us everything we need. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and the, his righteousness, and all things will be added. Everything you need will be added. I said it on Sunday. I don't care if you've been friends with people for 20 years. I don't care if it's family. I don't care if it's friends. I don't care who it is. Your soul should be worth saving than trying to please people and let people pull you down and weigh you down and hold you down and hold you back when there is something God is calling you to do. But when we try to please people and be people pleasers, it says you're not a servant of God. So that means you're not connected. So at this point, you have to, cha- you have to choose. Are we going to choose man pleasing? Are we going to choose to please God? So that's why we got to be con- careful who we connect, our, our, who we stay connected to. We got to find ourselves connected to people who believe, other believers. People just going to speak life into you. You know, I never want a friend that's always going to tell me what I want to hear. It's always going to go along, even though they know I'm wrong, it's two left shoes. We need people that's going to stand by us and say, honey, you need to rethink that. Then we need people, honey, come on, you can make it. We don't want, we we get in crowds where everybody go along to get along. You mad this Monday, we mad this Monday, we all mad. The boss is hollering. You're going to get mad because the boss is hollering. Why would we just say, well, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad I got a job. I'm going to just do what he say do and keep it going. We got to learn how to stop going along to get along. We're supposed to be set apart. People should say, you know what, every time somebody say something, she's going to be the one to say something positive. That's, the, that's who we're supposed to be. <laughs> and I'm laughing because people say, <laughs> my daughter says it all the time, when she want to fuss, she won't call me. Because I'm not going to go along. I don't care if you're my child. I'm telling you what's right. He said, I don't even know why I called you because I already know what you're going to say. Right. I'm going to tell you what's right. Just because you're my child, we, I'm not going to go along with wrong. Just because you're my friend, I'm not going to go along with wrong. So we got to stay connected to people that's going to tell us right, that's going to lead us down the right path. Stay connected. And I had a little analogy I was talking about with connection. You know how if we plug something in, it's power. It, 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 it comes on because it has power connected to it. But when we unplug it, we immediate lo- immediately lose its power. So sometimes I, I feel like we have, some, some of us have a relationship with God where we just plug God and unplug God when we need him. And so, when we unplug God, it says right there, when we, if we're not connected to him, we cannot, we can't win. So, we got to stop having this relationship with God where we, where it's a, a situationship. Where we just pull God down off the shelf and plug him in when we need him. And then after he bails us out, we unplug him and put him back up there until the next situation comes. God doesn't deserve that. And why do we want to live like that? When we can have all the promises that he promised us, if we just stay connected to him at all times, but then that's when we want to live our own way. We want to go our own way. We don't want to, we want to do what we want to do. But then when we, li- when we need God, we just take him down and plug him in. But we got to stay connected at all times. We, not, we shouldn't have that. So that's a flippy floppy relationship with God. We should not have that faulty connection. You know, one of like those extent. My granny had a fifty million, million extension cords all the time, and they were so old. Half of them had shortages in them. See, and then you go and you wiggle it, and it comes on. And see, that's how we do. We wanna, we wanna, we wanna treat God like an old wire, and then when we need it, we just wiggle them and pull them in and pull them out. No, we gotta stay connected. We got to stay connected to the power source, the main power source, at all times. Because if we don't, we won't have the power. And when we don't have power, we can't be successful. We can't succeed without our connection with God, a strong connection. Not that weak one that's faulty, that's got a short in it. We're talking about a full, strong connection. And see, some of us, 
When I say plugged in, some of us are plugged in, but we're not connected. So I say just showing up is plugged in. Just doing the bare minimum is plugged in. Just coming in at the end of prayer, coming in when we want to, when we know we have a job to do in the church and we just come in how yeah, we want to, when we want to, we just plugged in. But how many know you can be plugged in and no power? Because if we don't pay lg and the main power source, we can plug everything in there we want to, but it ain't going to come on. We have to stay connected to the power source. And some of us, it's plugged in, but we're not connected. Because we're still doing what we want to do. We live in this old lukewarm lifestyle. You know, we plugged in just enough to say we are, we are, we're Christian and we come and we believe, but our actions is not saying that. So let's stay connected. Get rid of them old faulty cords and, and, and get a, a, a real relationship with God. Stay connected. Stay connected to God. Stay plugged in. Don't abuse his grace and mercy because that's what we're doing. Oh, I know God will bail me out. But what happens when the grace and mercy runs out? And then we connected to these people that don't even like us. Looking for them to bail us out. Stay connected to God so we can get all that God has for us. Amen? Check your connection. So lastly, the third point for tonight is stay equipped. Stay equipped. So we got to stay committed, stay connected, and stay equipped. Y'all know where I'm going, don't y'all? Who know where I'm going? <laughs> Let's go to Ephesians um, 6, 10 through 13. I found a word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authority of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to risk, resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will be standing firm. That speaks for itself. It's the, it, it, it speaks for itself. I like the end. Then after the battle, so when you done suited up and did what you're supposed to do, after the battle, when everybody done done all they think they can do to hurt you, you still going to be standing firm with your dignity and your respect and your self-confidence, knowing I didn't have to stoop to that level. I didn't have to go there. As a matter of fact, that didn't even bother me. Huh? But the problem is, we are packing the wrong weapons and leaving the house half-dressed, unequipped. We're packing physical weapons, and we're using our mouths as weapons. Some of us talk a good game. You, you know how you got some people that can't fight a lick, but they'll scare you with they talk. <laughs> they'll talk you right out of fighting them, won't they? Like, girl, I wouldn't fight you or her. I wouldn't fight her. She probably going to turn her up, can't fight none. That's me that went. Is missing everything but that mouthpiece. We got our hands we using as weapons. And I still say math again because you know social media is a big thing now. And a lot of us are using weapons and, and fighting wars on, on social media back and forth. Y'all, that's not a place for us to be doing that. I love Facebook. I love social media because it has a lot of good stuff on there, good hair, good makeup, good products. You know, I met people that I haven't seen in years, high school. You know, you see, you know, find out people that you've been looking for. Maybe they passed away. You might be able to go to the funeral. I mean, it's good things. But then you got some people that have to make something horrible for everybody. And what I want to say, ain't nothing wrong with social media and Facebook, but again, we got to know our boundaries as Christians. We shouldn't be able to go on your Facebook page and tell you a Christian or not. 
Because I feel like some of us Christians, our pages is worse than the people that... Uh, I mean, how can you be committed and say you committed to God and connected to God and you, you, feel, right, you feel all right hitting enter? You feel all right hitting post after you just said all of that? Really? And I'm saying this to say, if we stay equipped and keep on all our armor, everything people say shouldn't even bother us. It, we should be able to read it and be like, oh, well, you know, even if she is talking about me, I'm not going to entertain that. You know, we should be able to fight off all of the negative vibes. It's the, it's the said we're, we're fighting spirits. We're fighting, you know, things that's unseen. You don't know why people might be lashing out at you, but if they, oh, well. We should be able to walk away. We should be able to hold up that shield of faith. Lord, listen. And you know what I want to say but I'm going to keep scrolling. We shouldn't be using our mouth as a weapon and using our hands. It said, it said what we say in Mark, some of us need to have one hand right now for the stuff we done typed out. Some of us shouldn't even have a tongue for the stuff we done said about people. But when we leave the house unequipped and not covering ourselves, that gives the enemy time to get in our head and take things and go our own way and do what we want to do and react. When we shouldn't be able to, anything, everything shouldn't be able to get to us to where we react the wrong way. But when we're not equipped and we made up in our mind, we're going to fight our own fight. We're going to fight the way we fight, the way I was raised. That's how we do it. No. Because when we say, we, we, we say we're a child of God, we say we love God, we trust God, we got to start living that way. We represent God daily. I don't care if you are in Kroger's. I don't care if you're in Walmart. I don't care if you're on the job. I said all the time, the church is such in high scrutiny right now. So now it's really not the time for us to be out here going along to get along. People should be able to go on our Facebook page and be, be encouraged. I might stop them from typing something all crazy and offensive. If we get equipped, and get committed, and get connected to God. It's some things we just shouldn't even be able to do. And with my commitment tonight, I wouldn't even felt right going home. I would have went home, it would have ate me up. You know you got a commitment. You know you're supposed to be committed to, you got something to do. How you going to go home and sit down? And that connection that I have with God that's the conscience that tells you when you're wrong. If you ever done something wrong, you know it was wrong. It does play all night long. I just sit up, be mad. If it thing don't, sh if you don't shut up, okay. I messed up, I know. <laughs> that conscience. But I thank and praise God for conscience. One time I wouldn't have cared. I would have did what I wanted to do, say what I wanted to do, and wouldn't have cared. But I thank God for changing me. I thank God for giving me a committed relationship. He committed to me first. And I thank and praise God for continuing to stay committed to me in spite of me. Because I'm a mess. And a lot of times I want to do what I want to do. But I'm determined that I'm going to persevere. And we got to remember life is going to happen. Life can be tough. Life can be rough. Life can be hard. Life can be lonely. Life can be confusing. We can feel lost, but we got to know that if we stay connected and committed to God, put on that full armor of God and walk and face the world, face your problems fully equipped, committed, and connected to God, we can do all things. We can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. But we got to know it. That's why we got to have that helmet of salvation. Because that, that blocks all this negative talk, thoughts. It won't let us think no other way. Because nothing else can enter in but godly thoughts and positivity. So tonight, as I take my seat, just remember the tips that I told you tonight. And you know what area you need to work on, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three. And that's fine. But I'm here to remind you 
that every choice and decision we make enters us one step closer to our final destination. And we are responsible. If Marcus says your hands, your feet, your eyes, you're accountable. We can't blame nobody else. What they did to me, what they said, they left me. They don't like me. No, your hands, your mouth, your feet. It's your soul. It's at stake. So every time you get ready to make a decision, let's think. Let's stop for a minute. What would Jesus do? I used to like them little bracelets. But when they first came out, it was more like a joke. I think some people was taking it as like a funny thing. But really think about that. What would Jesus do? And it says, commit your works. Commit your actions to the Lord. And all your plans will be successful. So maybe give me a bracelet and remind myself. If you need to remind yourself, the best thing to do for my soul, for my salvation, for my commitment, for my connection, for my relationship with God, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. So while we got the time and opportunity, free will and choice, let's choose God. Because people will fail you every time. But we serve a faithful God who never leaves us, never forsakes us. And my favorite looks beyond my faults. Whoo, and I have them daily. <laughs> Quite a few. But he continues to wake me up every day. A new morning. And I thank you every day. So it says obedience is better than sacrifice. What are we willing to give up to follow God? That's got to be obedience. Sometimes I say it's going to be a lonely road. You're going to be tired. You might even not feel good. You might not even look good to your eyes. But no, God has a plan and a purpose. And if we stick to the plan and let him reveal the purpose to us, the promises are following So I pray tonight that I said something that could help you. Because saving our souls is serious. Our sins are serious. And now is the time. The last days, we got to tighten up. Because time is winding up. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap for praise. I hope I blessed you. Amen. I hope I helped you. I helped myself. It's crazy because that, that message was for me and I didn't even really, really, really know it. I mean, I knew what I was talking about, but God had to put me right before I get here in a situation where I had to be a witness to stay committed. I was in tears. <laughs> didn't know if I was going to make it, but I was going to make my way. I almost said, Pastor, I'm down on Barstown Road. Come and get me. But I thank and praise God and everything worked out and, and I'm here. And I feel so much better. Because I stick to my commitment. Because I got a connection with God. And that connection gives me a conscience. To know it's some things I just can't do. And if you don't have that conscience, you ain't got the connection. You just plugged in. And I thank you, praise God. Give my pastor a hand. <laughs> Amen. Let's give Minister Porter one more hand. Amen. We bless God. It's uh, such a blessing to to sit back and get fed. I almost didn't want to come tonight because tonight is the end for me. It's good to sit back and just relax and enjoy the worship experience. Um, she she texted me and said, uh, Pastor, I ain't going to make it. When I first got the text, I was like, oh, it's all right, honey. Praise God. I understand. Because my mind is, she, she's on the praise team. I understand. I know how stuff happens. And then it dawned on me. Wait a minute. <laughs> she's on program. So if she don't make it, 
but I remembered what I was taught. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. That's the importance of reading the word every day, getting in God's face every day, because you never know, you may never get up here. But what if God catches you on the way home and you stop to get your favorite big red? Somebody's in there and they need ministering too. You don't have time to pick up the phone and see what you're supposed to say. The Bible teaches us that we need to be ready to defend the faith. That means whenever there's an opportunity, and, I, and we're going gonna to talk about it later, we're going to get into it more, but I think we've done ourselves a disservice the body of Christ because everybody wants to separate themselves from the ministers. You know, you hear people all the time, I ain't no minister. I ain't, I ain't no minister. I don't need to go to school because I ain't no minister. I don't need to study because I'm not a minister. I don't need to learn that because I'm not a minister. In reality, you are. You may not ever get up here behind the sacred desk, but don't you think God can't use you because he found his greatest king in a sheepfold. We're going to look at the life of David. That's what I was going to get out tonight. I'm glad I got to hold on to it. I was going to preach the same thing Sunday. I'm going to be like, he said that Wednesday. But he found his greatest king in a sheepfold. Being obedient. And his obedience put him in position. Because he was obedient, God elevated him. He didn't stop and say what he wasn't. He stayed obedient to the anointing. There is a space we're going to talk about from the anointing to the appointing. There, there, there's a space in there. We always hurry up and get to what he, what he did against Goliath and all of the victories, but there's a space in there before he was appointed and he was anointed and trouble was trying to track him down. So y'all go ahead and read 1 Samuel. Start at 15 and just keep reading until you go to sleep. Then when you wake up to my start back in it again because we're going to deal with the life of King David. But I thank God for my my, my preachers, amen, God bless you, uh, elders, Elder Young, Elder Porter, we honor the Lord for you, and we thank you for your obedience. You said it at the end, and it was perfect. Obedience is better, better than sacrifice. So I'm, I'm not supposed to be preaching. I want to open up the doors of the church, so y'all come on, stand with me. Uh, we're going to open up the doors of the church. Perhaps someone here or someone viewing via live stream may, may not have a relationship with Jesus Christ today can be the best day to the rest of your life. If you would simply say yes to God, he will change your life for the better. It's the best decision I ever made in my life. And one thing that I thank God for my grandmother and my mother and my predecessors. Now they didn't leave me a million dollars and set me up with a nice diversified portfolio. Now they didn't leave me real estate that I could sell houses and they didn't leave me none of that, but they taught me about a man named Jesus. And then it got better, y'all. One day, whew, I found them for myself. And when I found them for myself, everything changed. So that's the challenge I want to give to you. That's the opportunity I want to give tonight. If you don't know Jesus in the free pardon of your sin, don't wait to get better to come. The Bible says come as you are. He loved us so much we came as we was and he loved us and didn't allow us to stay like we came. And he's yet still evolving and changing us day by day. So that's what we offer tonight, an opportunity to come. If you're not present, you want to come, you're watching live stream, put your name in the comments. Give us your information. Go to our website. Get in contact with us. And I promise you, we will do our best to aid and nurture you into a rich, vibrant relationship with the man they call. I know you heard a lot about him and different people got different stories, but, but he's put you here so that you can write your own gospel. Today is your opportunity to try and try and for yourself. And I promise you, you will not need nobody, nobody else. So we're going to give you like 30 seconds to make a decision. 
You don't have to be, it don't have to be Sunday. It could be tonight. It could be tomorrow. What I love about him, y'all, he's open 24-7. He's accepting and receiving us any way we come. So if that's you tonight, come on. Give him your hand. Give him your heart. Allow him to lead you into heights unknown. It's a roller coaster ride you will never forget. But I promise you, if you just stay committed, if you just stay connected, he will take care of you. Amen. None has come in person, but perhaps someone has come online. We will get your information, and we will promise to reach out to you as soon as possible. A couple of quick announcements before we say the benediction. Don't forget, uh, if you want to partner with us, or you want to be a blessing, and you want to sow seed into good ground, we offer the opportunity virtually that you can go uh, electronically and sow seed into our ministry. We have Cash App, GiveLify as well as a mail-in system. Uh, we thank you in advance for all of those who continue to sow seed into our ministry and we're able to provide this platform that now allows our ministry to go worldwide. So we thank you for all of your contributions and uh, those who continue to be a blessing even in the midst of the pandemic. Don't forget, we're here every Sunday morning, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. is our morning worship, 10 o'clock a.m our intercessory prayer. We invite you to come out, uh, touch and agree with our intercessors as they come in and set the atmosphere and make it conducive for the spirit to show up and to do whatever it wants to do in this place. So we all, we all invite you. Come on out. Pray with us at um, every Wednesday at 6 and 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, which precedes our morning worship experience. If for some reason you cannot make it, we will still be live. We have a a hybrid church now, virtual church, so we will continue to provide this platform for you so you can log on. All we ask is that you do one thing is you press the like button, you subscribe to our programming, and you share it so that we can get the gospel out to as many people as possible. So if you want to uh, participate in that evangelistic opportunity, we want to say thank you so much for your participation. Don't forget, every Tuesday we had 19 Lord, we was close. 19, y'all. We're trying to get to 25. So we need y'all 19 to come on back and bring somebody with you. Amen. To our 8 o'clock prayer service every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. From the comfort of your home, from the comfort of your phone, wherever your phone can reach, you can call in. You ain't got to say nothing. You can just touch and agree with the brothers and sisters every Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock on our prayer call. That's the call number and the access code. And listen, you don't have to be a member. Amen. If you're a child of God you, and you know the power of prayer, we invite you to come and pray with us. <clears throat> Don't forget, we want to start this new initiative. I want to start this new thing. I'm going to start it off Sunday, but I'm going to go ahead and let y'all in on it since y'all already know it. We're going to um, try to, we know the, 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 the mandate are going down and they're allowing more people to congregate, amen, in the house of God and in other places. Amen. So we're asking that everybody will continue. Amen. We're going to ease our mandates a little bit slower than Brother Fauci and Andy. Uh, we want you to continue. Keep your mask on. Amen. Even if you've been double vaccinated, we understand, but we want to continue to do what we're going to do what we need to do to make sure we provide a safe environment and a safe atmosphere here at God's will. But we want you to invite one person one person with you to church. We want to build toward our church anniversary. And our church anniversary's theme is keep going. 
keep going. That's what, Lord, I said, Dave, David's in there too. I'm going to show y'all David, how David keeps going. But we want to build. So we were looking for all of our members, amen, those that are coming in person. Even if you don't come in person and you want to send somebody, amen, we want everybody to invite. Come on, I know you got one friend. I know you got one somebody that wants to come and to worship with us. We're, we're asking all of our members, all of our members to invite one person, amen. Listen, you got so much influence, you can get your friends to do anything. Come on, they ain't got no money you pay for. You got influence because you, you can call people and they'll consider it just because it's you. Ain't that right? Amen. You, you, got that kind of, you got that kind of juice. So we, we telling you, we asking you, amen, to invite somebody to the, to the household of God. We know things are easing up and everybody's uh, not comfortable. That's why we're asking. Everybody still keep your mask on. I've been double vaccinated. I have both of my shots and I'm still Amen. That's for me and my mask. We're going to praise the Lord together. Amen. So we, we want you to continue to keep your mask on until we get to another level of comfort. We're getting there. We're getting there. It's almost easing up. So but we want you to invite somebody. Is that all right? Will everybody try it? Amen. Will you go through your 19,000 people in your phone and just get one of them, amen, to commit and come with you on Sunday? Amen. Just, just one of them. Amen. Just, just to commit and come with you on Sunday. We're going to continue this initiative, and we're going to try to get to our church anniversary. Because remember, y'all, we still ain't hit a God's will party in this place yet. And we're looking for a high time, and the stuff is easing up just in the nick of time. So, so we're going to ease up some stuff. Listen, I got another good announcement for you. On the first Sunday, the first Sunday of June, we're going we're gonna to roll out our snack rack. We're going to roll it out. We're going we're gonna to roll it out slow. Amen. Y'all stay with me just for the first Sunday. Amen. We're going to roll it out, and then we're going to pull it back in, and we're going to try to ease it out. As we're trying to get back to some sense of normalcy, we want everybody to be comfortable. And the only way right now, you can, be, uh, you can, you can act like you don't know, but the only way we can be comfortable right now is for everybody to keep on their mask. Y'all remember when they first came out, you didn't want to wear them, did you? Now you don't leave home without them, do you? Matter of fact, you back up off people that ain't got none. You got yours on, and you still like them. I don't know, because we've been conditioned, and it's okay. It's okay. So we're going to keep our mask on. We're going we're to roll out our snack rack on the first Sunday of June. Amen. We're going to have a good time. Amen. We get to go downstairs and, and fellowship a little bit, and we're going to have some, some folk. We're going to have a little pathway for you to get your food and work your way on out to the parking lot. So it's going to be good, y'all. We're going to ease our way back into how we do it, because I miss how we do it here at God's Will. Don't y'all? Yeah. Ain't, ain't nothing like a hot dog and some nachos at the church. You don't know what you're missing until it's gone. You don't miss the well until the water run dry. Boy, and I tell you, them hot dogs does some stuff in our spirit. So we're going to roll it out first Sunday in June. Um, and we're going to ask that, you know, those that are here, come participate. And don't forget, amen, invite somebody every week. We're going to start out with one person. You get your one and you ain't, you ain't disqualified. You're just eligible for that week. Amen. Good job. We're going to try again next week. And we're going to continue to try to build Amen. And because sometimes the reason people don't come to church is nobody's nobody's invited them. Amen. So so we, we're not listen, we're not looking to steal, steal sheep. We're not looking to steal members, because I ain't never believed you can't steal grown folk. Amen. If you grown, you're gonna go where you won't go anyway. So at the end of the day, we want to offer the opportunity for them to come and worship with us. So we're asking that everybody will participate. Amen. I don't know if we laugh right now. I don't know if our whole congregation is seeing it, but you're gonna hear this again on Sunday. So we just need everybody to participate. Don't forget, as we close, our prayer list, all of our sick and shut in, those who are being healed by the blood of the Lamb. Don't forget all of our brothers and sisters that are um, uh, having surgeries. Amen. Getting out of the hospital. God is touching and healing bodies. So don't forget to lift them in your prayers during your devotion time. Amen. Amen. And don't forget, one more time, I'm going to cry Sunday because my baby's leaving uh, the last one. Amen. Julius is graduating. Like they, they always been like this. One doing one thing, the other one doing another. So one's coming out, one's going in. So I'm a, it's going to be a little, uh, little, 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 little snotty for me Sunday, so y'all pray for me. Amen. My baby bird is getting up out of here. Amen. He's going to flatter coot, so daddy will be a little, a little down. Amen. He, my oldest son writes letters. He, he done wrote like 1,700 letters. Uh, probably won't get one from this dude because he's not that kind, but <laughs> I pray put it in the earth. Now, I pray that he write and help me with my sanity so I can know that everything is out. You hear that, son? Okay, pray that he writes me. Y'all pray that he write his daddy some letters. 
make sure he's doing all right. All right, our hearts are massacred. Come on, y'all. Y'all know I got to make y'all smile. I can see them smile through them masks. Come on, let's smile. Amen. We thank God for another opportunity. Once again, God bless you, Elder Porter. We honor the Lord for your gift, and we thank you for your preparation as well as Elder Young. We honor the Lord and thank you all for giving pastor. It ain't always been like this, y'all. I couldn't take no break for a while. But the Lord has blessed us, and I thank you for your faithfulness. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Thank you, God, once again for your grace and your mercy. God, we thank you that we've been reminded again how important it is that we take the business serious, the assignment that you planted in our hearts. Father God, let this word permeate in our spirit. Help us to become better. Lord, that's all we want to be is more like you in our heart. So help us develop. Help us to look at our weaknesses, oh God. See them. Call them what they are. Stay connected to you until you make our weaknesses a strength. Thank you for our brothers and sisters who come out tonight. Body of believers, those that weren't able to make it out tonight that are virtually watching. We honor the Lord for our hybrid church. All of those who are connected to what you have began. Said in your word, he that began a good work, bring it to completion, God. So we thank you for what you started and how you're continuing to nurture it and manage it. Help us, God, be, to surrender to your will. And whatever it is you say, God, we'll do it. We'll be obedient even when we don't, we don't like it. So we thank you. We love you. As we leave this place, we depart from your sanctuary, but never your presence. Give us that traveling grace we need and help us to make it safely to our various destinations to find them the same way that we left them. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we need it to rest, to rule, to abide with us henceforth, now and forevermore. As all of God's people said together, amen, amen, and amen. Go in peace, family. We love you. We'll see y'all on Sunday.